Why does the newly formed Global Methodist Church need a conference called Reconstructing Methodism? That's the question we're talking about today. Welcome to Theology Project. My name is Dr. Matt O'Reilly, lead pastor at Christ Church Birmingham in Alabama. Christ Church is a Global Methodist congregation. And if you're new to Theology Project, welcome. We talk about all kinds of different things related to Bible, theology, and the practice of ministry in the church. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to get the videos, and we'll probably have some more things relating to the Global Methodist Church and its formation coming up over the next few months as we move into the convening conference next year. Help us out by liking this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click the bell so you get notified when new videos go live. So why does the Global Methodist Church need a conference called Reconstructing Methodism? We'll be hosting the conference here in Birmingham at Christ Church on April 26th and 27th, 2024. Uh, there's a link in the description below. Bishop Scott Jones will be with us, other denominational leaders in our main sessions at the conference. Hope you'll check out the link below and sign up to join us in Birmingham next April. So why do we need this conference? Well, in order to understand that, we've got to do a little bit of history because those, as you know, those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. And the history comes with the founding of the United Methodist Church. Churches have left the United Methodist Church to, join, to create the Global Methodist Church. The UMC, United Methodist Church, was formed in 1968. And then in 1972, uh, the Book of Discipline of the UMC uh, affirmed the value of theological pluralism. Theological pluralism means you don't take any particular theological uh, dogmas or doctrines or framework as governing your shared life. Uh, pluralism means basically all the theologies that anyone might want to hold are equally valid and affirmed and welcome. The United Methodist Church was set up with no specific theological foundation. All theology is welcome. Pluralism affirms the value of different theologies. You know, you might ask, what about the Articles of Religion? Weren't they included? Well, the discipline at that time called the documents like Wesley Standard Sermons, the Articles of Religion, uh, historical documents. It sort of treated them like artifacts that were there. They're part of our history. But if we're affirming pluralism, then the historical documents aren't binding on us theologically. This was perhaps the first time a Christian denomination was formed uh, with an attempt to not have a theological foundation. And you might say, well, then what is the foundation? If it's not theological, what is it? And the answer is uh, the United Methodist Church tried to build a denomination based off of a theological method instead of a theological uh, doctrinal foundation. The method was called the Wesleyan Quadrilateral. Uh, four aspects, scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. This was an idea of if we don't hold the same theological convictions, we could at least reason and do our theological method the same way. We'll draw on scripture, we'll draw on the tradition of the church, we'll draw on reason, our rational capacities, and we'll draw on our experience. And we'll bring those four things together, and we'll do theology in light of those four authorities or four aspects of uh, our theological reflection. And so the UMC, the United Methodist Church in 72, attempted to, to build the denomination not on theological foundations, not on doctrinal statements, but on a theological method. We'll try to reason the same way even if we don't agree on all of our basic convictions. That lasted until 1988 when the language of pluralism was taken out of the discipline and the quadrilateral stayed in, but scripture was given a primary place in the quadrilateral. Uh, nevertheless, the damage had been done, and there were plenty of folks all over the place who thought you could be United Methodist and basically believe whatever you want. It was an attempt to have a, a big tent, people with different views of what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a follower of Jesus in the same ecclesial body. And it was kind of an experiment. To my knowledge, we haven't had a Christian denomination or church founded without doctrinal statements or without doctrinal commitments, without theological foundation. Uh, and it seems quite clear that the experiment has failed. The tent, the big tent has collapsed and the church is coming apart, splintering right in front of us. 
So what do we need to learn as those who would form a new Methodist denomination seeking to be faithful, seeking to be vital, seeking to be missionally oriented? The thing we need to learn is we need strong theological foundations and theological reflection and theological shepherding at the outset. If we're going to be a church that seeks to honor God, honor God's purposes for our lives, and honor God's purposes for the world that he has made, then we need to spend some time reflecting on those things, and those are all theological claims. So at Reconstructing Methodism, we'll take up several topics that people in the new denomination are already talking about, already trying to think through what do we believe about the role and office of bishop? Uh, what do we believe about our doctrine of Scripture? That's a particularly crucial one because one of the reasons the United Methodist Church came apart is because there were vastly different postures towards reading Scripture, vastly different convictions among the clergy and the bishops in relation to Scripture, and vastly different interpretive approaches and views of the authority of Scripture. What does it mean for Scripture to be authoritative uh, in the church? So uh, we will have Dr. Chris Bounds from Asbury Theological Seminary come and help us think through our doctrine of Scripture. I mentioned the episcopacy, the role of bishops just a moment ago. Bishop Scott Jones of the Global Methodist Church will be with us to help us think through theologically uh, what, what a healthy office of bishop will look like. Dr. Madeline Henners uh, of United Theological Seminary will help us think through what it looks like to reconstruct Methodism as a Holy Spirit-driven movement. Dr. Bill Arnold of Asbury Theological Seminary will come and help us think about our theology of uh, theological education. What, what does it mean to educate the clergy? What is the reason that we have programs and expectations and requirements for the education of the clergy? This is one where there is some conversation already uh, how much education do we require of our clergy? and what's, a, what's an appropriate pathway? Do we need some folks to earn master's degrees? Does no one need to have a master's degree to be ordained in the Global Methodist Church? Those are questions that we'll spend some time thinking about. Uh, I intend to have a panel discussion related to that as well to help us think through those issues and hopefully come uh, to some potential pathways and solutions that we can all get on board with. Reverend Angela Pleasance, who is Director of Clergy Church Relations with the Global Methodist Church, will be with us, and she will be focusing on reconstructing Methodism as a multi-ethnic kingdom movement. Really excited to have her with us and to teach on that topic. And Reverend Paul Lawler of Christ Church Memphis will be with us. He is leading our efforts in how we set ourselves up to reach unreached people groups around the world with the gospel. And uh, Paul Lawler is going to come and talk about our theology of global missions and what does it mean to be deeply engaged with uh, the gospel for the gospel in relation to people around the world. The doctrine of holiness is absolutely essential to any Methodist denomination. And Dr. Matt Ayers of Wesley Biblical Seminary, one of our GMC recommended educational institutions will be with us to talk about reconstructing our doctrine of holiness. He's just co-authored a new book on the doctrine of holiness published with InterVarsity Press. And so we're excited to have Dr. Matt Ayers with us as well. And then Dr. Andrew Thompson of First Methodist Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma will be with us. He's going to talk to us about our theology of ordination. Uh, one of the things that's different in the Global Methodist Church in relation to, is, is the way that we ordain clergy. So in the UMC, you had uh, deacons and you had elders, and you were either a deacon or an elder. In the Global Methodist Church, people can be a permanent deacon. They can be a transitional deacon who is then ordained an elder after that. And so since that's different, we need to spend some time thinking about what it means and how it works theologically and what's the rationale. And uh, Dr. Andrew Thompson, a pastor theologian, is going to come and help us think through those questions. So I'm really excited about reconstructing Methodism. I think it's absolutely crucial that we take some time to invite the church to spend some time reflecting on these crucial issues theologically, and our speakers will come and offer theological shepherding to the Global Methodist Church over these couple of days. Uh, I'm really grateful to our speakers who've committed to come. And I hope you'll join us in Birmingham, April 26th and 27th, 2024, for Reconstructing Methodism. The website is in the description below, reconstructingmethodism.com. 
Uh, this is Matt O'Reilly, Theology Project. Thanks for being a part of this video. And uh, if you have questions about the conference, be sure to leave those in a comment below or tell me what you think major issues that the Global Methodist Church needs to deal with are. What are the things that maybe aren't on the list at the conference that we still need to talk about and create some, some space for reflection around that? You tell us what you think in the comments and we'll see you next time.